what's up hello my name is Emma and today I am giving you guys my monthly book haul in the month of May I bought slash received 18 books and I'm really really excited about this haul for some reason I feel like I've bought a few more books than I normally do and there are a lot in here that I've already read that I'm currently reading that I'm planning on reading really really soon so it's just like a lot of excitement and I'm super excited to show oh my god I just said excited twice in one sentence the first book that I bought in the month of May is the case for Jane by Brittany Calavaro. This is book three in the Charlotte Holmes series, which I recently started. And after finishing book one, I had book two lined up and I was like, I need book three immediately. If you don't know, the Charlotte Holmes series follows two teens, Charlotte Holmes and Jamie Watson, and they are the descendants of the iconic Holmes and Watson. They find themselves at the same boarding school in Connecticut, and there is a murder on campus. The student who was murdered happens to be a person that both of them disliked for their own reasons and so Jamie and Charlotte are framed for this murder and they have to investigate to find out who is framing them and why. I was so blown away by how much I enjoyed book one. I knew from the start this was going to be a series I really had fun with because of the whole tribute to Sherlock Holmes but book one just like wow I didn't understand how much I was gonna love this book. Book two Honestly, not my favorite. I was a little disappointed with it because book one was so great, but I'm really, really excited for book three. It's just like a really fun YA mystery story, and they have some of the most complex characters I've read about in YA in a really long time, and I can't wait to dive into book three. The next book that I bought in the month of May is The Last to Let Go by Amber Smith. Now, I'm sure you've seen it in a couple of my videos. I've been raving about her debut, The Way I Used to Be, and I was just walking in Barnes Noble one day and I saw this cover and I was like, hey, you know, that cover style looks really similar to the way I used to be. And I found out it's the same author. Then I read the synopsis and I was like, I need this book in my life. So a couple days later, I ended up getting it on Amazon and I also read it this month. So I just have a lot of feelings on this book. Our main character's name is Brooke and her life is turned upside down when she comes home to find that her mother has murdered her abusive father. No one really knows if this was self-defense or if it was premeditated. All Brooke knows is that her father is dead, her mother is in jail, and her and her two siblings are on their own for the first time in their lives. I won't talk too much about this book. I'll save that for the monthly wrap up, but I really enjoyed my time reading The Last to Let Go. It's a really powerful story about children who are forced to grow up way too soon and how spousal abuse can affect the other family members and it was just it was so unique and jarring in the exact same way that the way I used to be was and I can say with confidence that Amber Smith is one of my new favorite contemporary authors. The next book in this haul was actually sent to me by the author and I just couldn't resist including it because it sounds really interesting and that is Scream All Night by Derek Millman. Our main character's name is Dario and he is the son of a cult classic filmmaker and for the past three years when he has been legally emancipated from his family he has not set foot on Moldavia Studios which is the place the castle that served as the set and studio for his father's films. But in the present Dario is invited home by his brother who wants to have a sort of ceremony in honor of his father's first film and Dario believes that this is going to be a one-time visit to get closure on his hometown and maybe just say goodbye to some of the people that used to be in his life, but he ends up getting trapped into the whirlwind of Moldavia Studios once more. Scream All Night comes out on July 24th, and I'm really intrigued by this novel. I know the author has a lot of experience as like a screenwriter and a film school teacher, so I think it'll be a really interesting perspective on the film industry. It sounds super like creepy and mysterious and sort of like a mystery that I think I would really, really enjoy. So thank you so much to Derek for sending your book to me. Next two books on this haul I have recently bought and I am so excited about I could scream. The first is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. I read Ashley Herring Blake's debut last year and I loved it so much and then this is another book where just the synopsis struck me and I could not resist getting this book in my life. Our main character's name is Mara and her best friend Hannah has recently accused Mara's twin named Owen of raping her. So it's basically the story of Mara having to come to terms with what is family and loyalty and justice really mean 
mean to her? Is her brother really capable of this when she knows that she really should believe her friend? So it just sounds like another story by Ashley Harry and Blake that's going to involve some really complex family and friend dynamics. I've heard really great reviews of this book. I am just absolutely dying to read it. This is going to be one of the very next contemporaries that I pick up. If I'm correct, this book also follows a bisexual main character and it is one of like the very, very few books in YA that features a genderqueer character as well as the love interest. So I'm just, I'm hyped. This is one of those books that I just know I'm going to love and I cannot wait to read it. The next book I picked up is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. Just look at this cover, it's so dope. I picked this one up because it is actually in my book club's read for, oh my god, what months are we on? If I am correct, Undead Girl Gang is the read for the Biblio book club for May to July and I am so hyped for it. Our main character is a Wiccan named Mila and her best friend along with a few of the other mean girls at their school have recently died and it's being treated as a suicide pact but Mila does not believe that her friend could be involved in something so dark without her knowledge. Mila wants to know what really happened so she does what any normal teenager would do and raises them from the dead with an ancient grimoire. Unfortunately the three girls have no knowledge of what happened during their deaths but they do have some unfinished business so Mila Mila has to run around town basically stopping these undead teens from causing any more chaos before the spell wears off. I'm so hyped for this book. It sounds so fantastic. Definitely like something I would absolutely love and I've heard really good reviews so far so I just cannot wait to read this one. The next four books in this haul are a set of a newly designed favorite series of mine and that is The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken. Disney Hyperion so kindly sent me the new covers for The Darkest Minds series by Alexander Bracken in anticipation for the new movie that's coming out this year and I could not resist showing them in this haul because my goodness are these covers beautiful. I love the original Darkest Minds cover so much but there's something about these that I'm just drawn to every single time I step into a bookstore. If you have somehow missed the hype of the Darkest Minds over the last few years it is a young adult dystopian novel where certain children are affected by a disease where they die but the others gain superpowers. And uh, like most of dystopian governments, they're really, really terrible, and so they round up all of the kids with superpowers and put them into concentration camps. Our main character's name is Ruby, and she ends up escaping from one of the most dangerous camps and joining up with a few other kids with abilities on their way to find this safe haven, and it's all about the government chasing them and them discovering their abilities and all of the things that happen in dystopians, and I love this series so much. It's one of my favorites of all time, and I'm super, super excited to have the new covers. I got a lovely, lovely surprise from Simon & Schuster this month, so thank you so much to Simon & Schuster for sending me a copy of Save the Date by Morgan Matson. Our main character's name is Charlie, and her sister is getting married, so her entire family has come together for this weekend, and Charlie just wants it to be absolutely perfect, but it's a Morgan Madsen book, so that's not gonna happen. <laughs> the synopsis is just full of chaos. First the wedding planner quits, and then the house alarm won't stop going off. Charlie's biggest crush shows up unannounced. There's a tuxedo, an unexpected dog, and a neighbor bent on destruction, not to mention the event planner's assistant who is surprisingly distractingly cute and that's before things get really crazy. I really love Morgan Matson's books. They are just always such a pleasure. She's like the queen of YA contemporary in my opinion. She just writes such fantastic fun books and I know that Save the Date will be at the top of my list of her favorites. Sorry to interrupt this book haul but I do have another book that I just got in the mail and like I needed to include it in this haul immediately. And that book is What I Lost by Alexander Ballard. Now almost a year ago at this point I posted a 22 minute non-spoiler review for this book because I loved it so much with all of my heart. It is literally my favorite fiction novel about eating disorders to ever hit the market. And a couple of weeks ago I received a really amazing email from the author who said that she loved my review and she was just so kind to me and wanted to send me the paperback of What I Lost which just recently hit shelves. So thank you so much to Alexandra for sending me your book. It means the world to me. I'm so, so happy this book exists. 
guests and I'm just really thankful for all of your kind words. Because Alexandra Ballard is just the sweetest ever, she also sent me this brass ring necklace which has some significance to the book when you read it and it's actually a brass ring from the carousel that is mentioned in the book which is just super super cool so just again thank you so much. If you have not heard me gush about what I lost before, it follows a teen named Elizabeth who is entering a treatment center for girls with eating disorders. Like most people entering treatment, Elizabeth doesn't think she has a problem, she just plans to go through the motions of treatment, do what she she has to to get home and then pick back up with where she left off with restricting her food intake. What I love about what I lost is this is more than just a book about a girl suffering from an eating disorder. It is a book about eating disorder recovery. This is really a novel that shows that recovery is possible. It is something to strive for and it is a way for you to live a much better and fulfilled life and that is just a message I wholeheartedly agree with and I'm like I literally still can't believe this book exists because it's so amazing. What I lost is an amazing novel. I will never stop recommending it. So if you're interested and want to get the paperback edition, it's in stores now and I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. <laughs> so in the month of May, I ended up going to two book signings really close together. So I ended up turning them into one big book signing vlog. So if you want to check out the full events of these days, I will leave that video linked in the description below. But of course I went to a book signing and I got a lot of really awesome books that I can't wait to share with you guys. So the first signing I went to was for a few Fury Born by Claire Legrand. Now, Fury Born is one of those books. It's one of those high fantasy books that I look at and I read the synopsis and I'm like, dang, that sounds pretty cool. But like, it's high fantasy, so I don't know when I'll ever get to it. But as it got closer to Fury Born's release and where people were reading it and my friends were just like loving it, I just, I'm so excited to read Fury Born now. It has transcended that initial excitement and interest in the story. So Fury Born takes place across two different centuries and our first main character's name is Riel. In an attempt to save the life of the crown prince who also happens to be her best friend, Riel reveals that she is able to perform all seven types of of elemental magic and this is something that only a prophesized queen can possess. So Riel must complete a variety of trials to prove that she is the Sun Queen, but if she does not, she will be executed unless the trials kill her first. A thousand years after the legend of Queen Riel, we follow a bounty hunter named Eliana whose mother has recently vanished. And so to find her mother, Eliana has to team up with a rebel and go off on this dangerous mission. And so Furyborn has really been pitched to me as these two girls, the thousands of years apart, who have to find out that their destiny, that they have believed to be fulfilled is a little bit more complex than they realized. I've heard so many rave reviews of Fury Born that I just like know it's going to be good so when I eventually get around to reading it I am sure I will love it. So in that little vlog I did a little mini book vlog because I had a gift card to the Strand and I just went wild with book buying. So the first book I bought is The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. This book follows a trans boy named Leo who has recently joined a new school and he's super terrified of the secret of his past being revealed to his peers. Leo ends up standing up for a fellow classmate who happens to be a trans girl who is getting ready to transition and come out to the world. And so it just sounds like this really heartwarming tale about these two trans teens who really find comfort in someone who can understand the struggles they have been through and can really validate each other. And it just sounds like a really cute story. And I'm very, very excited to read it. The next book I picked up at The Strand is Lily and Duncan by Donna Gephardt. And I'm actually currently in the middle of this an audiobook and it's super cute and adorable I'm so so happy. I got it Our first main character's name is Lily and she is a trans girl who is stuck in a really interesting place in her life as She knows who she is and she is confident that she is a girl But she is dealing with her father not accepting her and not being able to come out at school And our second main character named Duncan has bipolar disorder and he has recently moved away from his home in New Jersey after some family troubles and so it's basically about these two teens who meet for the first time and how they interact with each other at school based on their different struggles. I may be about halfway through the audiobook right now and I'm really loving it. I'm not typically a middle grade reader but it really does read like a YA in my opinion. I'm really enjoying it and I'm super happy I picked it up. 
And then the next book that I got at the Strand is Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. Marisha Pessel is the author of Night Film, which is a book I absolutely love. So when she was coming out with a young adult science fiction novel, I was just super hyped. The synopsis of this book is a little difficult to explain because I literally have no idea what this book is really about, but it basically follows this group of friends one year after they have graduated high school and they're having their first reunion. Of course, things are awkward because they don't really know each other anymore, but there is also the shock death of one of their other friends that is sort of holding over their heads and they don't really know what happened. As the night turns into morning, a man knocks on their door and tells them that time has become stuck for them and they basically have to figure out what happened and how to fix it. It sounds really interesting. I have so much faith in Marisha Pessel as I loved one of the other books I read from her and I just really cannot wait to read it. And so the second book signing I went to in that vlog was for Marco Shiro's newest debut release and that is Anger is a Gift. I'm also in the middle of reading this one right now. I'm a little bit more than halfway through and I'm really, really loving it. Anger is a Gift follows a black teen named Boss who is dealing with a lot at the moment. He has anxiety and panic attacks. He's still not over his father's unfortunate and unjust death a few years ago. And to make matters worse, him and his friends are having a lot of trouble at school as the administration has put a police presence on campus for no reason and they've installed metal detectors and it really feels like they're being beaten down by their school. In addition to the already poor conditions of the building and all of the issues the school has with proper supplies, the students start to feel like they're being treated more like criminals than teens who are there to learn. So it's really a story about empowering teens to realize that they have a voice that is to be heard. It's about validating the anger of specifically marginalized teens who who have so many disadvantages against them and using that anger to be fueled into something more powerful. And it's so good so far. I'm really blown away by how much I'm loving it and I cannot wait to finish it. And so the last two books in this haul were sent to me by Penguin Teen. So thank you so much to Penguin Teen for sending me copies of Flame in the Mist and Smoke in the Sun by Renee Othier. I read Flame in the Mist like a year ago maybe and it wasn't like my favorite book. It was one of those books where like I read it and I really, really enjoyed it when I finished it. But after a few days I was like, wasn't my favorite. I have to say, when I first heard about the cover change for Flame in the Mist, I was a little disappointed because I loved the original cover of this one and online this cover does not look as pretty as it does in person, but it's really gorgeous in person. There's a lot of depth to it and it's like shiny and sparkly and the cover of Smoke in the Sun is equally as gorgeous in person. So I'm actually really happy with the cover change now. So our main character's name is Mariko and although she has aspirations to become a great alchemist, she is only brought up for one purpose to marry. So on the way to her betrothed home, she's attacked by assassins and she doesn't know why. So Mariko ends up disguising herself as a peasant boy and infiltrates the black clan to get revenge for herself. But it's the first place that she's really been praised for her intellectual abilities. And so it causes a lot of conflict for her. Flame and Mist wasn't like my least favorite book of all time, but it also wasn't like my absolute favorite. But I am definitely planning on picking up Smoke in the Sun. I might listen to the audiobook of this one because I do think book one does have a lot of promise but thank you so much to Penguin Teen for sending them to me. Alrighty well that really concludes my May book haul. As you can see I'm really really excited about a lot of the books that I got this month and I hope you guys are as well. Definitely let me know in the comments below of any exciting books that you recently got or books you recently read that you really loved because I am always looking for more recommendations but that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new one. Bye! Oh, 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 oh,